a Stuart Twin Victoria steam engine, some ideas to improve the way it runs. Recently I rebuilt a factory machine kit of a Stuart Twin Victoria and featured it in a series called a collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things. The pre-machine kit was fine, but the assembly was not so good. After a complete rebuild, here are some simple tasks to make it run smoothly, with even exhaust beats and without making knocking or tapping noises. These techniques apply to almost all miniature steam engines, especially twin cylinder models. I don't need to narrate all the way through this video, but in certain areas I will feel it necessary to say something. For instance here, the first job is to lubricate the engine. I am not using engine oil or machine oil to lubricate the parts, I'm using some special steam engine bearing lubricating oil from a company called Hallett Oils. This clip was taken from the first episode of the series, and it was actually the first run that I gave the engine. Initially you may think, well it doesn't sound too bad, but please continue watching the video. There is a distinct loud knock in one part of the cycle. And the reason for this is because the crank web nearest to the camera is loose on the crankshaft. The original crankshaft was a bit of a mess. I think the builder modified this. The right hand crank web was a different size to the left hand crank web. This is after I made a new crankshaft for the engine and have fitted a new crank web. I sort of borrowed this one from the box of parts for the Stuart Victoria that I'm building and one day I will get round to finishing the series. But to be perfectly honest, I have covered most of the important parts in the How to Build a Model Steam Engine video series and the rest of the parts are really easy to make. Although I will finish it eventually. Back onto this engine, as you can see, the crossheads were a rattle fit in the crosshead guides. And in the series about this twin Victoria, I showed how I shortened the spacers without using a lathe. After much work, and I really do mean a lot more work than I thought I was going to have to do on this, the engine now runs very well indeed. In this clip it sat on some bubble wrap on the bench, because my bench is a soundboard and I didn't think it was fair to amplify any tiny noises. To the viewers who previously commented, I would like to point out that now you can clearly hear four beats, particularly when I put the engine under load. Although by using my hand to apply a load to the flywheel, I cannot make it constant. I'm now feeding the engine with 50 pounds per square inch of compressed air and using a piece of Scotch-Brite not just to apply a load to the flywheel to stop it burning my hand, the Scotch-Brite is polishing the outer rim of the flywheel itself. I've removed my hand and it's time to turn up the pressure. A word of warning when running steam engines of this size, keep your fingers well clear at all times. After the high speed to see if anything falls off run, here it is running slowly and it's quite smooth. These clips are edited, but not in real time, and after running the engine for a considerable time, a slight knock developed. I think that was probably due to the high speed runs causing the oil to fly off the rotating parts. In this clip I'm applying some oil to all of the moving parts. Don't forget this is not a new engine, I think it was bought in 2014 as a kit. And also after my rebuild quite a few of the parts were tight. The engine needs running in or breaking in again. Believe it or not, it's still a bit stiff, but it's running okay in this clipper to low speed.
The slight knock that you can hear is playing the connecting rod fork on the crosshead and also side play in the big end of the connecting rod on the crank pin. What I haven't shown in this episode are the minute tweaks to the valve timing. I do get obsessed with this, but I didn't want to include it. Just slightly moving the eccentrics back and forth at both sides makes quite a lot of difference to the way the engine runs and sounds. I've already mentioned it, but I'd better put a formal health and safety warning in here. Always keep your hands clear of engines like this. You would not believe how much damage they could do if you got your fingers caught in the parts. This is not a small Mamod or Wilesco steam toy. This is a proper steam engine. I was really surprised at the power when many years ago I built my first Stuart Victoria. And in the very first compressed air run, I got my finger caught in the crosshead and I can still feel the pain to this day. I recommend treating machine tools and steam engines with a great deal of respect. If I caught my fingers in the steam engine when it was running at this speed, I would be seriously injured and require urgent surgery. You have been warned, please keep your fingers out of the way. In this clip, the beats are fairly even, not perfect, but even enough, I think. There is still a slight knock, and I think it's side slap on the connecting rods. And this brings me to top tip time, the first of two tips in this episode. If you wrap some cotton thread around the bearing, and if you look at the bearing, you can see I've already done this, and I've tied a knot in the piece of thread to stop it coming loose. Please note this is not a permanent fix. It will temporarily show you where the problems are. The cotton will soon wear through and drop off. A shim washer, and in certain cases a silicone o-ring, can stop this really annoying tapping sound. This is what the engine sounds like, now it has the cotton wrapped around the end of the crank pin. And now for top tip time number two. Use a different type of lubricant. I use two types of oil. This is general lubricating oil. I buy it from a company called Hallett Oils and the website address is currently on screen. This stuff, however, is superheated steam oil and it's much thicker. This is the standard bearing lubricating oil that I use. And now this is steam oil. It's very different. It's a lot thicker, far more viscous. To be honest, I do use steam oil on the smaller steam engines like Stuart No. 10s because over a very short period of time, the entire engine gets extremely hot, so I do find it better to use steam oil throughout. But the crossheads, main bearings, big ends, small ends, all need ordinary lubricating oil. But for the purposes of this video, I'm now using steam oil. Steam oil, being much thicker, is a great gap filler. Have a listen to the engine now. The engine seems to run much better now than it did before I started the rebuild. Have a look at this clip again from episode 1. and compare the difference with this clip. By now the cotton that I fitted to the crank pin is fragmenting. As I mentioned, it was only ever going to be a temporary fix. Here I'm re-oiling the big ends using the much thicker steam oil.
What I haven't shown is that periodically I add steam oil to the inlet on the engine and I have noticed that the residue coming out of the exhaust is getting cleaner. Originally, what came out of the exhaust was very, very black oil and it should get cleaner than this when the engine's fully run in. It's always a good sign when the oil coming out of the engine runs clear. There's still a very small amount of tightness on the crankshaft and that makes the beats sound uneven. This will improve with more running. There's not much wrong with the timing though. Look how slow the engine will go if I turn the pressure down. The engine is running very quietly, but that's because it's sat on some bubble wrap on the bench, which stops my workbench being a soundboard. And that is it. This project, for all intents and purposes, is now complete. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this final episode and found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.